So to start off, I, we, I wanted to talk about why even use a microphone. A lot of you probably think, I don't need this. We'll talk about some dynamics in the classroom that will help you see that, and then we'll go in right into the everyday use of the Juno. In many ways, uh, the classroom is working against us. Um, one exception, actually, the lighting. If you look up in the ceiling, there's probably fluorescent lights from front to back, right? We're spreading light all throughout the room. Light works with uh, student devices, your um, Promethean board, smart board. And so, man, we have light nailed down. But sound, audio, not so much, in that it's also in waves, but the classroom presents some problems for us. Some of those problems are around distance and around noise and echo. Been with us forever. The distance from the speaker to the, the learner, it changes all the time. The noise factor, HVAC, classes next door, uh, the noise of the students, that's something to be overcome. And then echo, uh, if your classroom isn't carpeted, uh, there's a lot of blurring of the sound that goes on because of that. So these things have been with us for a long time. There's a lot of challenges in getting sound into the classroom and into the kids' ears and brains uh, more than you might think. Another component of uh, some of the challenges, especially you elementary school teachers face, is brain development. A lot of your uh, students, until they're 13 or 14, don't have the neurological wiring so that if they miss a word, um, it's gone. They can't fill it in like adults do uh, with experience and context. So it's, we've got to be really concerned with the amount of words they actually do miss. Students miss 25% of spoken instructional content. That's from a study out of New York, and it's elementary school students in an acoustically sound classroom, a normal hearing, and it's one syllable words they're being asked if they get. And that's how many they miss up close. In the back of the room, it's up to 40%. So this is staggering, and it has huge implications for learning. Sound drops off with distance, called the inverse square law. Sound decreases up to 50% every time distance doubles. So this means it drops off. That's why we have light throughout the room, but sound we don't. But now you do with the Juno. Sound drops off with distance. So no problem, you'll just use your teacher voice, right? Project uh, loudly into the far corners of the room and no problem. Well, let's talk about that because what you're actually projecting are your vowels. If you look at the ellipses here in front of you, uh, in the top of it uh, are the lower frequency vowels up in the red part. But down in the bottom part are symbolizing the higher frequency consonants. And those consonants are what carry the meaning of language. Every global language, probably three-fourths of the meaning or more, is carried in those word endings in the consonants. So for students to understand you, not just to hear you, they need to understand those consonants. When you factor in the typical sound level of a classroom, 55 decibels, maybe 65, you can see what gets washed out. It's the consonants. You can always project your vowels. You can shout an O or an ah, but you can't throw an SH or a TH to the back of the room. You just can't do it. That's where the meaning of the language is, and that's where the intelligibility comes from. So audiologists tell us that there's a signal to noise ratio um, factor and there needs to be a delta of about 15 uh, decibels between the, the hearer and the speaker. That changes and it drops off toward the end of the room. I'll show you that in a second. Also echo. So if you, again, probably don't have carpeting, uh, that really impacts the echo. The standard should be about a half a second for echo in a classroom. It's really more likely about 1.2 or 1.3, which, which contributes to a blurring of sound and makes it harder to hear. When you do add a, a Juno and a microphone to your classroom, then you, some significant things happen, as you can see. So you spread and you distribute your voice and your media throughout the classroom, and your kids can hear you as well in the back of the room as they can in the front, and, and more intelligibly as well. You also will get scoring that will be consistent from front to back. So a lot of superintendents will be concerned about student academic performance, and uh, having a Juno in class will really help to mitigate that and likely improve it.